Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com and I want to quickly show you how to dockerize Apache and run your websites in the official HTTPD container. If you want to dockerize the Apache web server and copy your website into a Docker image and then run it using the HTTPD process, well, the first thing you need is Docker installed. So I'm gonna do a little Docker version command and verify that Docker is installed. You can see I've got version 20 in here. Well, I guess the next thing you're gonna need is a website. Now over on GitHub here, you can actually see that I've got a repository that's got a folder in it named website right there. It's got a couple of files, HTML page, some JavaScript and a CSS file. I'm going to bring that code down onto my local machine. Now you don't have to do this, but you do need a website to put into your dockerized Apache container. And as you can see, after I do this clone, I end up with a folder named website. In that website folder, I can dig down in here, take a look at it. There's the index.html page, and I'll open that with Google Chrome, and you can see I get a nice, handsome rock, paper, scissors application. Now this isn't rock, paper, scissors, this is a little number guesser application. And it's this number guesser application that I want to run in my Docker Apache HTTPD custom container. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, as you can see, I've got all of the code that I want to put into the Apache container right here in this folder called website. I've also actually got a little rps.html file, which is just a little rock, paper, scissors application, but I'm not going to use that. That's actually there to demonstrate the fact that the files that are in the same folder as the Docker file I'm about to create won't be pushed in unless you actually specify it explicitly. But I'm getting ahead of myself right here. If I want to build a custom Docker container based on the Apache image, well, I need to create a file called Docker file. And in this Docker file, I need to say, hey, I want to create a custom image, but I don't want to do all the work myself. I want to start off by, well, taking all of the work that the smart people of Apache have done and start off with the HTTPD 2.4 official image from Docker Hub. And by placing this inside of my Docker file, as soon as I tell Docker to build my Dockerized Apache container, it's actually gonna pull this image here from Docker Hub and then customize it based on what I need customized. Now, of course, you can see here, my customization is I want all of the files in this website folder copied into the Apache web server and have Apache host it. And so what I do is I pull out the copy command. I say, hey, find that website folder in the current directory. That's what the dot means. Find the website folder in the current directory. That's the directory where I run the Docker build command. And take all the files in there and copy them into user local Apache 2 HT docs. And that HT docs folder right there under user local Apache 2 is where the Apache web server running inside a Docker container is going to look for files when they're requested. So all of the files from my website folder are going to be pasted in there. One thing worth noting, it's not going to be put into a subdirectory named website. All of the files in this folder will be copied right into the root. So I'm going to save this file. You'll notice that it's inside this rock paper docker folder there's the docker file there there's the website folder here you can see i'm in that rock paper docker folder myself and all i have to do now is tell docker to well to build a brand new image based on that docker file so i go in here i say hey docker i want you to build a brand new image named apache docker example and I want you to do it based on the Docker file you find in the current directory. That's what the dot is for. A lot of people forget that dot. But when you say dot, you're saying look for the Docker file, the file name Docker file in the current directory. And it's in there. And so as soon as this runs, Docker is going to pull down that image from Docker Hub, copy all of my files into it, 
and create a new image. And if I type in the command Docker images right here, you notice that boom, a brand new Docker image has been created called Apache Docker example. Now I actually want to run my website. So how do you do that? Well, you call the Docker run command. It's not too hard here. So you say, I want to run a Docker container. I'm going to run it as a background process, a daemon process. That's what the dash D is. I'm going to give it a name so I can identify it. I'll call it HTTPD Docker 01, just in case I want to run multiple containers. You always do a port mapping. So I'm going to say, I'm going to map the well, local port 80 to the internal port used by the HTTPD Docker image. And what image am I going to run? Well, the name of the image up here is Apache Docker example. So that's what I want to run, Apache Docker example. And look at that, I ran out of real estate. I was so close. Okay, click enter. And all of a sudden, that container, a container based on that Docker image will run. You build images, you run containers. And if I actually do this Docker PS command, it'll actually say, yeah, you know, that Docker example image, it's running. The container that's running it is HTTP Docker 01. And it looks like it's even saying here that we've mapped port 80 to port 80. And so in theory, I should be able to say localhost on port 80 slash and of course all of a sudden my application will come up there we go the number guesser is working and it's running on port 80 now i don't need to say port 80 because that's the default but the 80 goes away but you can see the file is running and the cool thing about docker is you can always run this on multiple ports so i could always do a, a shout out to wayne gretzky here and say hey i want to run this again every container needs a new name I'm going to run a second instance of this dockerized Apache website container, and that should be running on port 99. If I do docker ps, we should see that indeed we've got two different containers running, 01 and 02. And now if I throw this on port Wayne Gretzky, Notice it still works, right? Because I've got this application deployed a second time in a second container running on this machine. This time it's on port 99. And of course, if I did port 88 here, a little shout out to Eric Lindros, it's not gonna work at all because that port hasn't been used. So I just wanted to prove to you that this isn't magic, this isn't razzle dazzle. As long as you find the right port, be it port 80 or port Wayne Gretzky, well, it's going to work. And there you go. That's how you can take your applications, take your websites, create a brand new Docker image out of them, essentially Dockerize Apache web server, Dockerize the HTTPD image that you can download from Docker Hub, put your applications in that container, and then run them. And there you go. That's how easy it is to dockerize Apache and run your websites in the official HTTPD Docker container. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com? I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Apache web servers, Tomcat, Docker, Java, Git, DevOps tools, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ and why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?